If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding-edge tools and tactics to micro-fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, welcome to Friday. This is my favorite day of the week. I'm really a, a total geek at heart. So uh, welcome back to the conversation, Vinny Fisher. Vinny, let's dive in to strategy and tactics. We've been helping entrepreneurs this whole way to get over mindset shifts and hurdles to innovate practices and pay attention to the markets and pay attention to what they do and impact more people. And now we get to talk about strategy and tactics. Tell me about the strategies and that you would recommend for entrepreneurs to be able to grow their business. Yeah. First, Mary, thanks again for having me. I, I love it. This has been fun and to have three shows with you and I can tell how passionate you are for your audience. So um, I, I really encourage all of you to take advantage of the gifts my team's put together because I think they're going to be extremely helpful on the tactic discussion. So something had to change for me as a business owner. And I want to encourage you on this as you mature, right? You don't immediately step up into a mature version as a leader or a mature version as a business owner. Honestly, let's be real. You started out with an idea. A couple people bought it. Next thing you know, a couple more did. And, you, you know, I have a 21, soon to be 22 year old daughter. And someone's like, so what's it like to raise a 22 year old? I'm like, I'll let you know, but I'm going to have one. And so the iterations of business, if we're honest with ourselves, we, we have some wisdom to gain on, but we're, we're working through versions of maturity as we grow our own company. And the next day is almost brand new to us. And so one of the things tactically that I want to help business owners with is what really led to the kind of the bigger thinking of fully accountable. One of the gaps in the small marketplace is having an entire accounting and finance department with the resources you need to have it. And so I'd come up with a motto, time, money, and resources. Where are you spending your time? How much money do you have to allocate? And do you have the resource to actually accomplish what you need to accomplish? Well, when you look at the marketplace of accounting and finance, Big companies have departments and then they outsource pieces of that because they, they, they get throughput. Small businesses are left with this void that we file a tax return at the end of the year. So my number one tactic for you I wanna give is a tax saving tactic. You need to have your business run like a business with a back office and it needs to produce its own set of information. We might call financials, management reports, so you're not just running it as a taxpayer, you're running it as a business so that it gets its own deductions, it gets its own stuff. And if you don't have the corporate complexities in place, so then you then push out a tax statement to yourself, the business owner, you're missing the legal step to your business first getting a shot at expenses and you the executive. And on average, because someone hasn't matured into that version of their business, they're losing about $40,000 a year of taxable events that they're just trapping into their own tax return. Have you ever felt like when you're with your CPA at the end of the year, like, oh, if I had known about that sooner, we could have done this or this or this. Well, that is telling on you as the business owner that you lack the complexity to separate your business from yourself. And the first aha moment went on with me is like, holy crap, fully accountable business is a go. But let's just say fully accountable needs to have its own set of books. And then me as one of its owners gets a K-1 and I get a second shot at my expenses that don't necessarily belong at fully accountable. Well, that's stage one of maturity. You need to separate yourself from your business and actually have a mature operating organization that has its own business decisions to make. Then as you, the owner, rob from your own business, you have your own set of information you deal with on your tax return. So I would start right there and evaluate 
your level of maturity, because I, I will immediately know where someone is on the continuum of maturity when their first thing they want to do is go to about saving taxes, but they don't want to invest in putting this piece in place. They want to skip to the tax savings and take away one of the best vehicles that we have within our system to save them those taxes. I agree 100%. And there are two places that most entrepreneurs, especially solopreneurs, these superheroes that, uh, again, I cop to that I used to be, uh, there, are, those are, there are two places that we usually just don't even want to think about. Yeah. And that's one of them. Our accounting systems, our, our actual investment into the, the structures that we're creating and the processes that we need to have to be able to be efficient and have the highest profit, and also the legal side. Those are the two things we don't even want to think about. Uh, protecting and the funny our- thing is, I want everyone to stuff. think, I agree with you, by the way, no one wants to spend any time. I didn't, uh, I didn't set out, I'm a lawyer, by the way. I didn't set out <laughs> to uh, open a business to like worry about back office and legal issues. I want to be really clear with what I make sure everyone's hearing me. Those are things you have to do to get the layers. You're, I'm not asking you to focus on accounting or legal. I'm saying get the layer in place to best optimize your business. Now, in order to do that, you're going to have to jump through some of those hoops. But I don't, I'm not setting out here saying you need to be fully like have that, get a version one of it. Yeah. But that's the only way you're going to get there. And the funny thing is, I'm not coming at this from accounting and legal. I'm saying you, the business owner, you have a responsibility to your organization to start thinking beyond your shadow. And if you want to start thinking beyond your shadow, you got to start putting complexity that allows you to take the biggest benefit out of it, which in turn allows you to employ more people. And really more importantly than employing people, if you really believe in what you do, more people get it because you can now provide that to more people. Amen. Because here's the deal. We've, we've started, we've talked in these three episodes about various levels of entrepreneur, the superhero solo entrepreneur. That's the person who has the expertise, has the passion, is excited, starts a company, starts some kind of a process, sells it, uh, gets wrapped up in the sale of it, basically creates a, a job for themselves. Well, if you're ready to actually step out of that job and actually own a business that operates again, that, that your shadow is cast beyond just yourself, you need to have some, you, and I, I agree with you as to the, the stage one of some of these processes. Many people think the stage one, many, many people are a, an LLC, a sole proprietor LLC, corporate LLC, partnership LLC, whatever that is. Then when you go through that stage, you then might, the next phase might be a C corp, then an S corp. I mean, there's lots of different structures that you can go through, but if you're not setting it up to be beyond you, just you as a, as just the human and the owner of the business, this is what Vinny's talking about, being able to take advantage of and invest in opportunities beyond just what you can touch. Did I get that right? No, no, what, yeah, you did. And, and so I have a, fa everyone always asks me, what's your favorite design? Now there's so many things that go into each business as how to answer that. But honestly, if I've got more than one partner, I like a multi-member LLC, everything that I operate is inside my holding company, which is an S corp that owns my interests in these entities that allows me to play very nice between those organizations. And then because we've had a lot of success, I've got fancy things like a limited partnership and some trust documents and like more expansive things. But version one of separating me from the business starts with some of the stuff Mary's talking about, like get some entity stuff in there, get some advice from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Start version one of that so that in 18 months, you can start to take advantage of organizational complexity. But if you don't start to think that way, and you think you're going to magically find the right tax advisor that's going to get you to save a few bucks on your 1040, I don't think you're thinking about the maturing aspect that is required, like this fancy term, the fiduciary responsibility you have to your own business to actually add complexity to it is one of the critical elements to being a business owner, not to being an entrepreneur. I'm convinced that most people set out to, to sell something or do something. They never really think about the maturity of the business. It's thrust upon you. And I just want to encourage you, you can do this. Version one of it was a spreadsheet for me. It wasn't some fancy tool and some whatever. As we, I just knew we had to invest in those things. And I gave it attention, not like 
after math attention because I was sick of giving all my money back. And I started giving it real attention. It's so true. And as our as our tax system becomes even more complex, uh, let's see how many IRS agents are going to be hired over the next uh, year or so. By the way, yeah. I see amazing opportunity with that, right? So oh, yeah. to me, here's how I, I look at today. Do your own first version. And then what I would do is rent before I buy on everything I do. Even today, I rent subject matter experts before I buy them. So what I mean by that is I will rent a PPC agency before I build out my own team to buy our PPC. I will rent an SEO expert before we would do SEO ourselves. I would rent an outsourced accounting firm before I would ever build out my own department. I would rent before I buy. That's the next level of growth in a business. And I believe in that in al almost every area. I'm not sure I'm a rent buy person in the brain part, which is you and maybe your like project manager slash COO. I think you can pull some of that off, but in every area of the company, uh, I would rent before I buy. Absolutely. I mean, marketing, uh, you know, you and I, as marketing people, that's the one that's most difficult for me to, uh, to rent someone else, but, uh, but specific parts of marketing, like the copy is I'm, it's very, very hard for me to pass over copy to anyone else. It's just difficult, not impossible, but it's difficult. I'm much more of a, I have to stop myself from being a micromanager in that department. Well, I think um, every solopreneur needs to hear why though, because it is your expertise. And yes. it is one of the hardest things of the shadow to get out of. Um, yeah. And so I was always our best affiliate manager. I was always good at building affiliate teams and driving traffic. And so when I started building out other affiliate managers, that whole 70% thing we talked about the other day got yeah. away because I knew I'd be better at it. I was yeah. always good at building out affiliate programs. And so the, I would caution you, Solopreneur, if you're a great designer, if you're a great programmer, that's going to be your hardest blind spot when you're the subject matter expert. All the other ones seem easy. If you don't want to think about accounting, I'll just go rent it from somebody, right? Those seem easy. Customer service, you fill in the blank. Your expertise. When I had to walk away from our marketing department, that was harder than I realized. It is. And yes, it's my expertise, but I agree with you about the 70% mark. And luckily I've become very good at teaching people how yeah. to create copy so that I can give them every possible advantage, every possible skill, every possible idea or way to think through a process to be able to get them to be the best they could possibly be. And I agree. 70% is an amazing mark to have yeah. people hit. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think most of them hit at least 80 or 90%. I really, I'm not as, I don't think uh, incredible as I might've thought I, I was, you know, say five years ago. Um, many, many more people come up with even better ideas, even in my marketing idea, <laughs> right? I would, most so, businesses don't need new ideas. They need execution. And yeah. so what I found is that my 70% marker was to deal with, um, things that may or may not have always been true, but I have better executors who sit in the roles that I once sat in who are better stewards of their role than I was because there's more than one role to be stewarded. And that's the beauty of an organization. Complexity is building out teams. Honestly, most organizations need execution. They need throughput by people who are really good at that. And over time, you get better at it. Um, for someone like me, who's inherently lazy and doesn't want to do something twice, I'm not somebody you should ever hire for that job. There are plenty of people who are going to be amazing at that. Absolutely. All right. So any last words? I know we've gone through this whole process and it has been absolute brilliance. I, I just, you, you say these things and it's, it's very, very clear that you've lived these situations that you share, but they just come off as so, so easy to talk about for you. Mm. Is there any last a piece of advice, talk about strategy, tying this all together from mindset to impact and innovation to strategy and tactics, anything else you'd like to share with the incredible entrepreneurs listening? You know, like any habit, it takes effort every day. If you don't have an attitude of either eating well or exercise, well, you got to go put that into practice. I think the practice of business is the same thing. Every day I challenge myself, what? And I have this kind of little gift that I'll make sure is whether our thing. I don't know if it's in there, but I'm going to, after this call, make sure it is. I have a business model to our business where I think about the eight 
uh, avenues of our business? And what are we doing to improve areas in each of the business? I think of that like I do health, food, other areas of my life. Um, I think we should always be tactically thinking about how to fix blockages in the business. And if it's small, then you're part of the blockage. Back to that shadow conversation. So that's why I want to leave you with every day, making it a little bit better. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate, and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.